Uh, hi, this is Dhruti uh, from Ecole and Tweet Lab, uh, Director of Marketing and Admission. Um, a warm welcome to all our students who've uh, joined us for today's webinar. Uh, we have Ms. Madhu Amodia, the head of Kolkata School with us. Along with them, we have our students uh, from second year, third year, and postgrad. Let me introduce uh, first Aditya Vikram, who's a gaming student, uh, second Hi. year. If you, yeah. We have Radhika, who's a postgrad student. Hi. And we have Punky, who's a third year student with us in visual communication. Hi, guys. As we start today's webinar, can I please request uh, you all to share a little about yourself and um, also you know, introduce yourself, please? Thanks, Truti. Uh, uh, I'm Madhu, and uh, my journey with design started 20 years back. Uh, I was pursuing architecture when I got an opportunity to do internship with uh, contract advertising in Kolkata. That's how my journey in design started. Uh, at great fun, got a chance to move to Mumbai and work with TBWA. Uh, Mumbai was big exposure and I kind of realized I need to learn a lot more. I went on to do my master's from London College of Communication, got a chance to work with Condé Nast Group there. Also uh, displayed my work at uh, uh, London Design Festival and especially VNA Museum out there, which was like a high point. Uh, then or after all of that, I chose to come back to Mumbai, came here and worked with some uh, design firms like BY Work, worked with a lot of big brands like uh, Johnson & Johnson, Unilever, CNBC, uh, quite a few of them. And uh, then I went through like a, like a identity issue, like a, been a part of a lot of award-winning projects was making a decent package, but then what? Uh, I wanted to work for a bigger change. This led me to work on with a lot of NGOs from South Africa, which were funded by Bill Gates Foundation. Also in India, I worked with TIS. Uh, then I want, went on to work and uh, work with CSR projects, which was uh, Mondelez, if you know about them, and uh, Ambuja Foundation. They do a lot of fantastic work in India. So I collaborated with them as a design communicator. Uh, after that teaching happened and uh, I realized that was my passion. Uh, as much as I thought I got to learn, which is uh, inherently me. I think I'm meant to be a learner my entire life. And that was great fun. Uh, this, was, this was very exciting and I went on to teach in multiple campuses in Mumbai, but I'm a huge admirer of uh, Equal Institute Lab pedagogy which uh, kind of uh, led me to take on the offer when I got it to head uh, Equal Intuit Lab Kolkata. And here I am sitting with all my uh, colleagues and students. Okay. It was Thank a fantastic you. journey. Thank you, Dhruti. Um, can we have Aditya share about himself, please? Uh, yeah. Hi, everyone. So my name is Aditya, and I have been studying in Equal Intuit Lab for the past two years now. So. Basically, I started off with studying science first during my school days, which is the whole reason why I chose design because I thought that science would help me in such in some way, but it apparently didn't. So I chose design because since childhood, I have been fond of making things like be it a model, be it a character, be it an environment, anything I have always been fond of making it and putting it down on paper and I had always been playing games since I was young and it's not like I'm old now but still uh, <laughs> and I came across this college and I saw that it provided game art and design so I was like okay I do like games why not apply here I applied over here and the courses over here were really interesting. Like we were allowed to learn certain things which would allow us to make 3D stuff, allow us to make concepts, allow us to make environments and all the things which I always wanted to do. So coming across this uh, college really inspired me to take up design even more. And here I am in this college. Thank Great you. Great to have you, Aditya. Um, can I request Punky to share, please? Uh, she's a third year student with us. Hi guys, so um, I am in a call since three years. I chose design as a career because I was always interested in art, but I love the idea of art having a function and yet having a skill, you know, to do so much more with the art 
that you know skills that you have got so yeah design is where i feel you know it all means and um, it's like three years of experience at a goal each year has made so much difference in the person i am in terms of my skills in terms of how i see things and how i present myself to others and i can't wait for the last year to get over to have the full package ready of myself so i love it goal and i uh, Always, you know, I'm glad I ever made it. Thank you, um, Radhika, uh, a postgrad student. Hi, uh, my name is Radhika, and uh, I was uh, right, I, I was studying uh, humanities in school, and uh, even though I knew I wanted to do design, I feel like I pushed it uh, to the back at that point because I felt like I needed to do something. I felt like it was a very permanent decision to make to do four years of design. right out of school and uh, which is why i went on to eventually do english i studied english literature at uh, lady shriram college in delhi and uh, i was uh, so i've been doing calligraphy and hand lettering for the longest time now and uh, i was freelancing uh, before i joined uh, into it lab uh, in 2000 uh, july 2019 and uh, so i was freelancing for a bit and i knew that this is uh, the field i wanted to join eventually and uh, i i thought i was done pushing it uh, and trying to only take it up as a side uh, a side hustle but um, yeah so uh, right out of college i knew i wanted to do uh, i knew i wanted to get back into design and uh, it's a it's a funny story actually because uh, i'd been looking at this particular school uh, elsewhere and i was so sure i wanted to go there but the minute i saw the program at uh, uh, in duit lab the program i'm doing now the lab pro uh, course the minute i saw the program and I, and the course and how it was laid out and everything i it was i think everybody else was also surprised that i made the switch so quickly because i just knew that this is what i wanted to do and uh, yeah sure i am <laughs> so happy to have you Uh, um today we also had dhruvil uh, who's an uh, who's an alumnus with us he graduated last year dhruvil share us your story please yeah sure um hi guys i uh, hope you all are doing okay uh yeah so i graduated last year i did a four year undergrad program by the way i'm dhruvil and i work at landor at the moment it's a branding agency and i'm a designer out there um Yeah, my four years out here have been amazing. Uh, I've always been, you know, design uh, have had a design background from childhood. I feel um, I was actually going to do architecture, but like two weeks before my entrance exam, uh, the tutor who was teaching me architecture uh, told me about a call. I came here. I looked at everyone's work, the program, the prospectus, and I was sold right there. And Guess what? I didn't give the entrance exam for architecture, and I think it's like one of the best decisions I've ever made. Uh, I'm doing pretty well out here, and uh, I think I've had a great experience. Yeah, uh, I've also got the opportunity to study abroad uh, as one of the programs that Indeed Lab has to offer about the semester exchange. Uh, I studied in Exon Provence, France, for a whole semester. That was about five months. Uh, in the studio uh so that was great uh we also have two internship programs in middle of the uh four year program which is amazing because it helps you understand how the industry works and um yeah you know what you're getting into before you get into it so i think that was a great experience um yeah thank you That's right. Super, um, Madhu. Can you share with us a little presentation about Intuit yeah, Lab? Yeah, sure. Yes. So we'll just take you through the journey of uh, Intuit Lab, what we have to offer here, and then we'll take uh, we'll uh, then the students can take on and showcase their work. So we are equal Intuit Lab. Uh, we have four campuses. Who will just mentioned where he did a semester exchange program. The reason why you should. uh choose eco in cute lab is for the unique vision of our founders clemon and uh frederick who wanted to create a program which was very unique and which wasn't being offered anywhere globally we teach you something called creative intelligence which is uh, the core dna of our program 
one of the reasons why this college uh, is doing really well, and especially the kids, is uh, professionalization, which we emphasize at every step, which is about balancing between theory and experience. Global exposure is again one of the keywords which we explore. And applying this creative intelligence, which you learn here constantly in all your projects, which will enrich you much further. These are the core uh, values of our campus, which students learn. Uh, the programs which we have to offer. Dhuti, would you like to speak about them, please? Sure, sure. Um, so we have, uh, you know, three flagship programs in the undergraduate space, and then we have a postgrad program as well. So the first program is the visual communication and digital design. Um, so this is a four-year program uh, offered both in Mumbai and Kolkata campus. In the Kolkata campus, we offer the degree as well. You get a BDES in uh, visual communication and digital design in collaboration with Techno India. Uh, that's the visual communication program. We have Game Art and Design, which is a three-year program. Uh, in collaboration with Ubisoft. Uh, you have the option of doing your fourth year with Eberta University. Again, um, the uh, relationship with Eberta University is pretty much, uh, uh, you know, sorted. Students have the option of doing their degree uh, over there with them. Fine Arts is a new program that we've introduced this year at the Kolkata campus. It's a four-year program, um, again, with internship and an opportunity to shadow and work with artists, um, galleries, and um, everything related to art. Uh, we have a very unique program in postgraduate space, which is called as, uh, again, advertising design and digital communication. Uh, so students from any background, you know, students who've done law or engineering or science or uh, pursued anything else could uh, aspire and take up this program, um, which is an 18 months program with a three months internship included into it. We then have a certificate program um, called as the entrepreneurship program meant for creative uh, students looking to set up their own um, studios or their own setup or enterprise, uh, which they want to, uh, you know, initiate and start. And we, it's a 10 months program, uh, which is a weekend specific program. So yeah, these are the programs that we have to offer uh, at this point of time. Yeah, Madhu, thank you. Thank you, Dhuti. Uh, now, why uh, we, uh, is Ecole Intuit Lab truly global? So a lot of people do claim their programs are global. I think this is one of it. Uh, you learn the French style creativity. These are some of the subjects we offer in the first year. The Paris trip, uh, which our students will mention, some of them had gone for it, uh, which happens for two weeks, where you uh, get to interact with the global community, as well as uh, you get to attend workshops. International workshops, which is again a core of our program. Uh, we have designers coming uh, to all our campuses everywhere uh, and uh, teach students. Uh, it's a great exposure for them because they are learning from international designers. Uh, this is offered across board to all the programs we are offering. Semester exchange, again, uh, an opportunity which is offered in Intuit Lab. Of course, your performance counts. Uh, if you are doing really, really well, you get an opportunity to opt for an exchange program where you can go to any of these campuses across the world. The last but not the least is we have a huge network of visiting faculties who are professionals in their own right, and they are committed professionals. This uh, students will share how it enriches the experience. Uh, here we'll go on to show a quick portfolio of the kind of work our students have produced, and some of them are award piece, award winning pieces. Sketching, which uh, generally you'll be exposed in the foundation year. That's the first year. Here you can see a student making, creating their own vision of the artwork. Some of students' work displayed. These are award-winning posters designed by our students. And this is a work we created in uh, Paris, 
uh, it was again award winning. So like you can see the body of work, which is a short synopsis, but it shows the kind of brilliance our students are capable of. And thank you so much for listening. Ruti, would you want to add on something here? Um, what I'll, yes, so um, it's just summing up in terms of the courses that we offer, it is very much uh, one of the objectives and the mission of the school is to ensure that the learning is very much industry ready. Uh, and that is through getting professional faculties to be part of a program. Um, faculties are all working in the industry, either they have their own design studio set up or they're working with corporate agencies, brand agencies in the space of advertising, digital design, UI, UX. And these are the professionals who come and teach our students. So right from the briefs and the assignments given to the student to the output, uh, the faculty are constantly mentoring them and bringing the industry re relevance uh, to their education. Um, yeah, so that's one of the USPs of the school. Uh, so here's a question uh, to our students. Um, so what kind of skill set is required uh, to take up a design career? So one of the concerns which most of the students have that we all, we have to have really great, uh, you know, drawing and sketching skills. Um, so would you please elaborate, um, you know, Madhu, could you tell us, start with you and then, you know, the students can take it up. What are the skill sets required to be part of a design um, school? I think the skill of uh, uh, the love for design, the skill of curiosity, observation, exploration is what we look at. And of course, if you have good hand skills, that will help you. But if you're still a bit raw, we make sure you catch up in first year. Our first year is extremely intense. It's like a complete boot camp program where uh, we uh, do a lot of handwork uh, related activities. So a lot of sketching and drawing will constantly happen. Right, great. Uh, Panki? Yeah, so uh, like Madhu ma'am said, uh, it is very important to have a skill set for drawing and sketching because then there is no point because that's the only way we are expressing whatever we are thinking. So I feel a bit of both. The thought process also matters. I go to companies for interviews and all and I've seen it. It is very important that you have a different perception with the world or the way you think is what sells you, you know the most in the outer world because execution will be way better when you know the thought process is better and i have also experienced that amongst my assignments like most teachers also are you know happy with my work when i have think differently about it so yeah both both the things uh, thinking the set and uh, execution set of design uh, and art. thank you great aditya um so as per the skill sets, you don't really have to be great at drawing something because everyone has a different talent, as I can say. Like some would be amazing on paper, some can be amazing digitally, or some can be amazing using their brain. So what you really need is to be open-minded and you should have the basic knowledge of how to draw something and how to think about design because that is what this college is really teaching you in the end because in the end when you look at it not everyone is as great as the other person is so all you have to look at is how good you can be at the particular thing you are interested in that's it uh, radhika so uh, like Gruti mentioned earlier everyone in the labro uh, program it comes from uh, different uh, fields and none of us are uh, most of us are not from uh, design related backgrounds and uh, there are a lot of people who don't have the best, uh, you know, tactile skills and drawing skills. Uh, but I don't think that matters because uh, what I've realized over over my time here in uh, in Tweet Lab is that uh, everyone's good at their own thing. So th we're we're all doing like a bunch of uh, we're all studying a bunch of different things, and uh, nobody is good at everything. Everyone has their own, uh, you know, everyone has their own forty. Everyone's good at. Uh, different things so i think uh, that's what uh, that's what makes the difference so i feel like you just need to be there with an open mind and you know wanting to learn and that's important so, yeah. um Dhruvil, you've been a student and now you're a junior designer so would you share you know what kind of skill sets are required being as a student and then the transition into the uh, workforce yes of course uh so yeah there's a big stereotype that you know graphic designers need to be good artists painters sketchers whatever 
but that is actually not the case. I've had students in my class, my batch actually, uh, who were not really good at it. Not, I mean, but I think they were open to learning. They gave it a shot and now they are one of the best designers that I know of. So basically, as long as you're open to learning and op just take in uh, different kind of uh, experiences, uh, I think you will be good to go. Uh, there's a lot to learn out here. There's a lot of opportunities as well, uh, courses and directions which you would have never even heard of or thought of. And I think uh, as long as you're open to it, you're just going to go to places for sure. Uh, so then coming up to the next question is, uh, tell us a little about the academic learning. Could you share the assignments that you're doing in class and the process that you'll follow? Radhika, can we start with you, please? Um, I think uh, what set this course apart from, uh, like, apart from everything else for me was the fact that all our faculty is uh, actually, they're all working professionals. And I think that makes a huge difference because uh, they know where they're coming from. And uh, they have, they have, they literally have the best insights to give you because uh, they know uh, where you're coming from, what you're working on, and uh, the direction in which you're planning to take it. So um, I think uh, the fact that we have uh, industry professionals teaching us is uh, something that's uh, great. So um, I thought I'll just begin with uh, uh, when the year began, we sort of uh, started with basic assignments and uh, everything was broken down for us uh, since, uh, since I said we don't, we, none of, most of us don't come from design backgrounds. And uh, this was uh, one, of the, one, of the, one of the first few assignments we did where uh, uh, you had to Im imagine letter forms as uh, uh, objects. So this was one. Uh, this was another one. This is expressive typography. Uh, this is uh, something I put in there because I thought uh, uh, this was one of the assignments we did where we uh, sort of explored one thing in di uh, and how to take it in different directions. So one difference in how uh, it can work out is very different uh, uh, end results uh, based on how you treat it. This was uh, um, an initial logo design, logo redesign assignment that we worked on. This was uh, for our visual expression class uh, where we were exploring watercolor. This is something I recently worked on. This is the packaging I worked on for, a, uh, for an imaginary product. Uh, we were just, the brief was basically, uh, the professor drew a box on the board and she asked us to imagine an object in it. And uh, we sort of had to give it our own twist. So, this is also something I recently worked on. It's um, a coffee table catalog uh, of sorts uh, for Forest Essentials. It was my luxury project. Uh, yeah. The idea was to talk about, uh, you know, um, a particular collection and uh, sort of bring it up as a royal ritual. So that was the overlying. Um, this was my FMCG project uh, earlier this year where we worked on uh, rebranding Wakefield. And uh, so we did the packaging, we did a couple of point of sale, uh, ambient, all of that. Uh, this was another project I worked on for a while. Uh, this project went on for quite a while, but I think uh, this was one of the best uh, projects I worked on uh, as yet. Uh, we worked on a set of uh, 20 cards and uh, just we worked on a set of 20 cards and uh, uh, my set talks about menstruation and uh, things people don't know about menstruation. Even women themselves don't know about menstruation. So uh, here's a couple of cards that I put together just to give you a sense of what it was like. Yeah. Uh, this, uh, these pictures are actually from my uh, time in Paris. Uh, I was there for uh, the international workshop uh, earlier this year in February. And uh, we worked on uh, uh, the, the workshop that I was part of, we worked on uh, the, the, the picture on the top left is actually from the first day uh, of the workshop. Everyone did their own thing. And uh, after that, we started putting everything together. And the picture next to it is the composition that we uh, built uh, using everybody's work. And uh, eventually, uh, we all were split into groups and we sort of came up with our own posters uh, from 
the the composition that was made so it was very interesting to see that you know you start off doing something on your own and then uh, you put it together and then you break it down so the process was very interesting and i also put together a few pictures from our trip in paris just to give you a sense of what it was like right so yeah that's nice so I'll talk about the academy first. So, as part of the academic curriculum, it is always important that one can grasp more than what is already, you know, a part of an academic curriculum given to uh, someone when you know they are not versed in that. And I feel I have got so much more because, like Radhika said correctly, about the faculty that we have or the atmosphere that we live in. It's so much more inspiring. I never felt the that from the industry out there. From the moment I started in my first year, I was constantly reminded or taught about how the industry is out there and how I have to, you know, go in the direction to even, you know, add with my presentation of work and work and how the industry thinks of uh, the subject and everything. So it is really nice. Each each year, you know, it has been. a great journey of learning so much more about the outer world and i think by the time i'll even get out from my after my four years i i think i'll be quite ready in terms of professionalism also because we at the goal also nobody is you know like treated as uh like a student all the time we are all treated like individual professionals and we have that maturity also to interact in that sort of way So I think it it actually takes a very good upper hand in terms of the academy at a personal level. And um, I I don't have quite my work here on my iPad because I don't know where to present it. Okay. Um, Aditya, you want to share the uh, Gay Martin design work from first and second year? Yeah, yeah, I'll share. Wait. so this is my portfolio not really it's more of the bunch of artworks that i have made in the last few months and this is basically baby yoda and it was inspired from the mandalorian and i had thought what if baby yoda was evil this is a character which i made on cbrush and i had made this character first on paper it is my own concept the concept was basically that this female has been abandoned in her childhood and she could not find anyone to be with because of the lack of her tail the tail that you see here is actually a belt this is a small radio transmitter which i had made during our global game jam where we were making a game based upon a guy who was a shady dealer in an underground area where he would make any device out of the scrap he would get this was my first ever 3ds model which i had made using 3ds max it is a fire hydrant and making this taught me a lot about how the whole wireframe works and how many poly counts should be there for a game ready model i don't think this video will be able to render properly but let me know so these are the research and development parts which i really love doing the basic brief that was given to us during this was that the whole Japanese axe came out from the word agile axe in Japanese. We first started researching about how agile would look and during that process we decided to make an axe out of it. So I started exploring how the agile axe would look like. Then I went on to turning it into a Japanese themed axe and then I started researching how the Jap Japanese people make their weapons. And I ended up with this model in the end and this is the second it is a dagger which was created for a professor of mine who is specializing in game design and all of 
the research and everything was done based upon how he would hold the sword and how he would want the sword to look like and how he would want a different unique style in it this blade also has like a small hole in it which allows a weapon in different ways like it allows a bullet to travel through it this is another piece of art where i chose to make a pixel art style environment which was based upon the forest fire which held recently in the australia region this is a concept art which i made using photoshop and the brief was for this was that we had to make a cave and it was upon us how we want to show it so i decided to show the interior of the cave like this and this is a small diorama which i made using 3ds again and the basic theme that was given to us was horror so i came up with the idea of showing an haunted place where there was blood flowing around and this is what i came up with thank you um dhruv will you want to share with us uh, your portfolio yeah sure uh, i would like to comment on the academics firstly uh, i think yeah there's a big plus point in having visiting faculty because they are actively working in the industry and they bring a lot of experience and uh, yeah experience to the table of course and a lot of opportunities as well i must tell you that um having this faculty around opens up doors to a lot of opportunities when it comes to jobs freelance internships and what not so that is amazing uh, also um yeah i would like to share the my portfolio uh yeah um uh, okay so this is the first project which is something that i did in the second year and how i converted that into a uh award winning project uh this was one of the semi final uh, this was awarded as one of the semi finalists at the adobe design achievement awards in 2018 uh it's a typography that i've created using the penrose triangle which is an impossible object or as you can see this is something that cannot be created physically but can only be viewed virtually from a particular angle uh and inspired from that object i created this typography and how i've extended to other applications such as flyers t-shirts and visiting cards the second project is something that i did in my uh, internship during the second year which was at open strategy and design uh this is called 12 months of the year the question i asked myself was what if each month of the year had its own personality so as happy uh, sorry as optimistic as jan as loving as feb as bored as march as confused as april as excited as may as marvelous as june as gloomy as july as bored as august as low as september as angry as october or uh, guilty as november and excited as december and these i converted into t-shirts which i've actually sold online as well so you know how you can create business out of um small projects of your own uh this is something that uh this project the soul of india is something that uh won me uh the hexco 2019 and i was in the top 5 in india uh it's all about interactive design and typography the brief was what is the soul of india and for me soul of india is basically the language and sanskrit being at the heart of everything so i have visualized it as the seed from which uh, the different roots and the, of the culture of india um roots out so if you see i've written the word atma atman which means the soul in all different languages or uh, national languages of india um okay and uh, this is something that i did in my internship at landor uh in the fourth year in the first semester uh it's a packaging design uh i don't know if you all have seen this but this is actually out in the market right now 
this is britannia time pass and this is the first time britannia wanted to enter the snacks category uh, how we positioned it uh, to compete with the competitors like kurkure and lays and how we created an architecture for its flavors um, and different variants along with understanding the uh, consumer market uh, it is a mass product as well so this is how the design looked uh, this is the front of pack and back of pack so uh, learning the technicalities of design along with the creative bit of it uh, and this was actually the whole process how we started in the first place on the top left how we continued it on bottom left and then how it actually looks in the market right now um yeah thank you right um madhu we have a question for you so yeah. you've been teaching since a while uh, you know so what kind of challenges uh, do you face along with students uh, both both what are the um, from both perspective you know your great moments versus uh, you know what you want to advise to students uh, so i was teaching as a visiting faculty for 6 years before i took up this post uh, the first campus i which made me into a teacher was eco institute lab i uh, fell in love with the students like all of them are, have told uh, us that being open minded is really really important that was one of the core characters another one which we really emphasize at uh, equal intuit lab is that each journey is very individualistic we never compare students and we try, try to work with their strength and skill sets to make them the best possible in their journey so there is never a comparative point where you are supposed to be like somebody else we are not looking for photocopies we are looking for rock stars we will create uh, you just saw dhruvil's work and it is one of it each of our students have very very different and diverse set of value sets and that's reflects on their work so that was our attempt in our entire journey as a mentor low points are of course when you sometimes can't get through students uh, that can be extremely extremely heartbreaking but uh, we we find a ways we've learned some tricks on the way how to uh, make them perform finally but yeah it's it's everything it's like uh, mentoring them encouraging them sometimes playing the counselors too that's a part of being a teacher which is what makes it invaluable so well, like extend this questions to our students as well radhika you want to share your best moments um, you know and also certain challenges uh, that you face as a student <laughs> um i think after what madhu ma'am said everything kind of falls flat <laughs> but uh, um i think one of the things i recently realized was um uh, recently i was working on uh, a, an assignment and uh, i didn't get any sleep uh, two straight nights and uh, the end result was totally worth it so what i was getting at with this is the fact that those two nights i was i was contemplating whether it was even worth it but uh, the end result was uh, worth every bit of that so i think uh, that's one of the small things that you know uh, has a you know has a high and a low in itself so i think uh, every bit of work that you put into uh, thing is worth it so um panki i think it it has, it has all been fun but with the system to me now i have to say and it is exactly i have the i've had so much fun in like uh, i don't know in all sorts of assignments that i've done because there's a full liberty in all those assignments to so, like you know there's there are less rest restrictions but i i feel there are safe boundaries also to it because i have to stick to the brief but yet i can be free in that brief itself so like that and even disciplinary in terms of submissions and not procrastinating too much and yeah not being late like i think yan is good. whatever yan says that that actually is impactful <laughs> after all i was just summer. going to ask you that did you stem did you spend time outside the class because you were late by a few minutes did it happen yeah yes if you are one minute late so that also doesn't know but i feel in all it makes a huge difference in what kind of person you want to become like after three years i've understood of how much discipline is important because it actually makes me happy when i do things at the right time and do finish it at the right time i feel it's it's important if you can yeah. do it 
skills of time management, right? So all thanks yeah, to Yan right. if he's listening. Yeah, yeah like uh, over the years you will be like, oh my God, Yan, Yan, Yan. But like at the end of the year, you'll be loving him the most because you are one of the most of the time with Yan. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Yan. Yeah. Aditya. Yes, <laughs> For me, the best time would be whenever I make something which I don't, which I don't know how to make. Like for last year, I would say we were given a project to make a vehicle under forty-eight hours, and I had no clue how to make a vehicle, and I had no clue how to even go ahead with that project. So, doing the research for it and coming up with a vehicle by the end of the deadline was. the best time for me great um any low points any challenges that you faced so the low points would be that the software kept crashing a lot and i had given up at the end but luckily in the end the software didn't crash and i was able to do it otherwise the most common low point would be that i had come to a dead point like Like a dead end, like I didn't know what to do next. I was stuck. So taking a breather really helped. Like taking a small break really helped. Otherwise, I'm not a person who takes a break during work time. Uh, also, while well, you mentioned about software, Aditya, can you share what softwares are you getting trained on um, as part of a game art and design program? Yeah. So we first start learning with the basic uh, softwares like 3ds Max. then we move on to sculpting models like zbrush and then we move on to texturing substances like the substance painter and the substance designer and as per making games we use unity okay uh dhruvil you want to share both from a student and and uh, being a professional yeah uh, i think there's a big difference in being both of course like uh being a student it's very lenient i would say uh the life but when you come into a professional world it's completely different like if you have two weeks you have two weeks it cannot you're not going to get even one more day uh but i think the best part about ecole was like it was a very collaborative program like any faculty you would say uh, have worked uh, very closely with madhu ma'am as well in lab in the third year and the fourth year and i think any time you need them they are always there whether it's in middle of the day or at night i think that they are super helpful and super resourceful for sure uh the good part about this was like uh yeah i mean creative blocks is something that has been a challenge for everyone but like i said it's a very collaborative program even the students out there no matter whichever you are you just you can just go to them and talk to them and they will always help in whatever way possible uh the great part about this program is that i literally got to learn every bit of design like whether it was advertising branding 3d motion graphics uh animation or illustration i think this is an edge that we have on other competitors out there i would say because i have worked with many people from different colleges and i think the skill set that i have to offer because of my experience in a code what i've been ta- taught is much greater than this i'm not saying uh uh skills wise but at least knowledge wise for sure um yeah and professional life is difficult but i'm really liking it i think i've made a good decision sticking to design and yeah um we also for, for the others who are wondering who yan is we do have yan along with us he's avp operations uh, yan could you wave out please great yeah we have a question for you uh, part of the academic program um so students would love to know more about ui ux um, as part of a curriculum whether we offer motion design so if you could share a little bit on that please yeah hello everyone um indeed uh, in the uh, visual communication program we do offer uh, digital uh, starting from year 2 uh, we start with a web design and gradually uh, go till uh, launching an app on the market we have a incubator program the last year 
uh, we do that with a, a partner, which is a startup resource, an incubator. So students learn everything about what is required to launch an app. So not only the graphic part, but also uh, all the experience, the, the marketing part and the strategy, which is uh, very, very important. So that's for uh, UX. For motion uh, design, uh, we have a program starting in year two. It's an introduction to motion design uh, that moved to UX uh, motion design in year three. So whatever they learn in motion design, then they can apply it to make animation, to tell something to the user through an app or a website. Uh, so a couple of last questions before we wrap up today's uh, webinar. Um, tell us a little about student life on campus. I mean, what do you all do off and on, I mean, on campus, off campus, Radhika? Sorry, before I say anything else, uh, there was the question in the chat box that I just read. And I think uh, uh, somebody was talking about how they were intimidated by the work uh, that was being displayed. Uh, I was at that place uh, before I joined, so I know where you're coming from. And... Uh, I just like at this point, I can just say you have to trust the process and everyone gets there. Everyone's timelines, like Druti said earlier, would are different. But um, I mean, you'll get there eventually. So I don't think there's any need to be intimidated uh, by the work because I was there. I know what it feels like. I know everything feels like it's, uh, you know, uh, like amazing and professional and everything. But uh, of course, you know, you have to... Uh, uh, work along the way, but I think you'll get there eventually, so you don't need to be scared. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. yeah, sorry. Um, about student life, um, I think everyone uh, can add more eventually, but uh, one of the things uh, I really like about in Tweet Lab is the fact that uh, the, the environment is very accepting. So, uh, doesn't matter where you come from, who you are, what you like, uh, what you dress like, doesn't matter because uh, everyone at Intuit Lab is very accepting and uh, nobody's judging you. And I think, uh, I think that's one of the things that really stands out to me. And uh, honestly, I have, uh, I know that uh, college is portrayed. Usually I went to, uh, I, like I said, I'm in the postgrad program. Uh, when I was uh, doing my undergrad here in Delhi, I know that college life is very, uh, you know, you bunk lectures and you sleep through lectures and you don't go to class and all of that. And college is portrayed like that usually. But uh, at, in at Intuit Lab, I think there's not been a day that I've woken up in the morning and I've not wanted to go to college. So, and I say that from a very, uh, like, that's a very genuine uh, point of view because, um, I've never woken up and not wanted to go to college. And I think that's the best part about in Group Lab because uh, I stay away from home. I, st I, I don't, I don't, I'm not from Bombay. So I think uh, just having to get up every day and uh, going to college is, uh, if it's a treat, I think uh, that makes all the difference. And uh, I think that it is like that. So, yeah. Uh, Punky? Uh, from the first moment, uh, I remember the day I walked into Equal. It has always given me this homely kind of feeling. Like, not the kind of home that I am right now in, but like, it was so, it felt so safe and so nice. And yeah, like, you know, Radhika mentioned, it's not like other colleges. You cannot bunk here and you cannot sit through classes and all. But I don't think that's kind of a, like, you know, like a thing that I'll even regret because I feel the classes are interesting enough to not sleep through. And yeah, like the college is fun enough to, you know, come every day in the morning and, you know, spend the entire day. In fact, if I'm home, I feel I should be at college because so many things will be going on over there and each day has its own value at the course. So you, it's literally up to you as an individual how much you can grasp out of that one day through you know, the people you meet or so many, like the students and the faculty and the best part about Equal is also that you, you are never left out. Like the faculty and everybody makes you feel like, you know, we are there for you. Like right now, also at the moment of like lockdown and all, I, I think the faculty is working great. In fact, Yan is working amazingly to get us to companies for, you know, our internship program to get like done very nicely, you know. So I, I never felt like alone or left out because there's always personal attention given to the 
you know, saving. So yeah, it's it's absolutely amazing as uh, you know, campus life could be. But I know other colleges, not that I know of, but I don't think it's, it's very different in terms of the cultural value of you know where it comes from. I think that makes a lot of difference than other institutes out there. So yeah, Aditya. Um, so for student life, I would say in the end, it depends on how much you want to learn. If you have no interest in how much you want to learn, you will anyway skip anything you're doing, be it not just college life, be it anything. If you're not interested in what you're doing, you will not do it. But for me, since I am interested in what I'm doing, I'm always there in college. I'm always on time. I'm always doing my work and I'm always having fun with whatever I'm doing. Other than that, when I'm outside college, I don't really work. I'm always playing games and I'm always watching YouTube or Netflix or something. I am not working. But once when I'm in the workplace, I am always working. Um, Dhruv, you want to share your four years? How has it been? It was amazing. I think I really miss it now that I don't have to go to college every day. It just, it's really sad. Uh, I think the thing I miss the most about it is actually the campus. I think I've had a lot of memories out there. Four years is like not a small amount of time. And uh, yeah, it's not only with the students, with the faculty as well. It is not at all formal kind of learning. It's very practical. It's very friendly and approachable, I feel. And I think that's what keeps us interested and keeps us going every day. And yeah, it, it's been an amazing journey. Yeah. Yeah, thanks. Uh, Madhu, we have a question uh, for you. The students inquiring saying that if they want to pursue uh, a design course, do they need to have a design background? Um, you no, want to elaborate on that? So like we mentioned, uh, we, uh, if you can apply from any discipline uh, you are from. So if you are applying for undergrad programs, you have to do your plus two could be in any subject you are pursuing. And similarly for postgrad program, you could be from any uh, graduation background. You can join the program and we start from the scratch. And uh, what uh, Radhika didn't mention was Lab Pro is a very, very intense program. So I guess uh, they were just working whole day long uh, and it's, it's extremely intense. And so is first year because that's the year you get to learn all the basics. So we make sure you cover the ground. That's our responsibility. If you truly want to pursue design, like all of them have mentioned, come with an open mind, be really willing to work hard on it, and you, we'll take care of it. That's, that's my perspective. Yes. Uh, Jan, I have a question for you. Um, post, post the lockdown, we've adapted to the online mode of learning. Um, would you share a bit on that and also the internship uh, virtual fair that we've organized? A um, couple of points and, you know, give a perspective on how our students have adapted and um, how we're going so far. Yes, so uh, very quickly, first of all, uh, we had a very, very smooth uh, transition. We did not have a single uh, hour of interruption, actually. Uh, thanks to the fact that we used it a bit, uh, this online system, before uh, it was uh, imposed by the government. So, uh, for example, at DTI, if you remember, uh, you had a workshop uh, with uh, someone in France from uh, Ubisoft about yeah. design. Mm, yeah, so yeah. we had this experience before uh, starting. So the day we had to uh, move everything online, uh, it went uh, very, very uh, easily. Uh, now the big question was about the internship because the internship is compulsory during this uh, program. Uh, so we were a bit, uh, annoyed to not be able to uh, to start our internship program that starts in May. So we've decided to also move it online. So we, we started a big campaign offering agencies in India and abroad uh, to give internship to our students uh, who will work from home and do maybe the whole internship or part of the, in the internship uh, online itself. And uh, we had a very, very good uh, response. So far, we have uh, 43 agencies who, uh, who uh, registered for that. And uh, we are conducting 163 interviews 
with students uh, so far, online interviews. So that it's, it's quite successful indeed. That's a great uh, feat that we've achieved and we keep the academic uh, rigor uh, ongoing very mm -hmm. much. Um, so just summing up, um, you know, the discussion that we had and sharing uh, here with in terms of uh, what Ecole Intuit Lab is all about for the ones who joined in a bit late. Uh, so we offer uh, three undergraduate program uh, in visual communication, game arts and design and fine arts. We offer a postgraduate program in advertising, design and digital communication. Uh, like Madhu Ma'am said, we really don't need to have, uh, students don't need to have a design background, passion, uh, you know, to be part of uh, the design industry. Um, really not great skill sets required, but, uh, you know, for say, observation and design thinking and, you know, be open to all of that. Um, our admissions are very much ongoing. Students could apply online and uh, we are conducting online tests and um, counseling them through, uh, you know, uh, with our faculty as well. Um, so that's very much ongoing. And um, yeah, I mean, we've otherwise covered uh, most of the things that the students have attempted to ask. Um, if there's anything, you can always write back to us. We, we are conducting Wednesday webinars um, every week. Um, next week, we are going to be having professionals from the design industry joining us. So these are professionals where our students are either working or uh, they have uh, enrolled for internship. So this is going to be a very industry perspective, um, you know, webinar uh, with professionals and uh, our academic, uh, you know, leadership team uh, together. So you'll get to know what it takes to be part of a professional um, setup. Um, yeah, that's it for now. Um, thank you so much for joining in. Um, a big thank you to our uh, students uh, for coming in today and being part of this webinar as well. Um, all of you all um, have a great week ahead. Um, you know, be uh, positive. I'm sure this phase shall pass too. And um, we continue with um, uh, our ongoing classes and uh, webinars. And we're planning master classes as well, where we'll be conducting a session on typography in packaging design and other such related topics. So uh, do look out for notifications on Facebook and Instagram. We keep posting all of them all the time. Thank you so much. And we see you next week. Thank you, Druti. Bye, Thank all. Please take care. Be safe. Thank you, all the students. Thank you.